Welcome back to the Tale of the Tape here on Boxing Legends TV. Today, we'll be breaking down everything you need to know about the upcoming unification clash between Joseph Parker and AJ Anthony Joshua. We usually only do this type of video for 50-50 showdowns, but this is a big fight for boxing right now, and I think it deserves a closer look. Defending IBF and WBA champion Anthony Joshua will enter the ring with a record of 20-0 with 20 knockouts. He was born and raised in Watford, England, and is currently 28 years old. Joshua packs his huge build into a body of 6 foot 6 and has a reach of 82 inches. He's a classic man fighting in the classic orthodox stance and will be expected to weigh in at roughly 250 pounds. Moving on to AJ's performance card, his standout stats are his power at 91, ring IQ at 88, technically solid defense at 85, with his stamina being his lowest at 79. But it takes a certain type of fighter to exploit that, and we'll reveal if Parker will be that man later on. WBO champion Joseph Parker will enter the ring with an unbeaten record of 24-0 with 18 knockouts. He resides roughly 12,000 miles away in New Zealand and is still relatively young, turning 26 earlier this year. Parker is just tall enough to be mentioned amongst the dinosaurs of today at 6 foot 4 and has a reach of 78 inches. Joseph is also an orthodox fighter and is expected to weigh anywhere from 240 to 250 pounds, so again, very little between the two there. As you can see, Parker's card is quite well balanced with his standout stats being his speed, power and chin. With him being from New Zealand, you should expect nothing else for the latter. Parker's stamina and ring IQ are his biggest flaws to speak of, and we'll elaborate on that later on in the video. I'm sure by now, many of you watching today already know the story of these two, so we'll keep this section short and straight to the point. But you believe you can go all the way, don't you? I'm not saying anything just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Parker's rise to the top started roughly 20 years ago when he took up boxing thanks to his father, Dempsey, who was a huge boxing fan and named after the legendary champion Jack Dempsey from the 1920s. And sent to the canvas for the first time in his professional career. Parker quickly became one of the best rising prospects from New Zealand as an amateur and fought around the world, winning various medals and only ever losing to guys like Tony Yoka and Philip Hergovic, who went on to be top 10, possible top 5 heavyweights in the amateur circuit over the next few years. Parker turned professional in 2012 and started bombing out every challenger in his country. Franz Botha, Sherman Williams and Kelly Meehan are a few amongst others. Parker rightfully built up some hype and started knocking over top 25 heavyweights every few months and earned his chance to fight Andy Ruiz Jr. for Tyson Fury's recently vacated WBO World Title. Good one two to the body by Joseph Parker. Draws proving oohs and ahs from the crowd here in Auckland. Parker had to come through a tough fight, but rightfully got the decision and has made two title defenses since, with a great win over the young Huey Fury being the one to stand out. Looking back at Parker's career, it certainly hasn't been all roses. He's had to come through some tough scraps and game challengers to earn his status as a legitimate champion. The Joshua fight has been talked about for the last few years amongst fans, and it's great that we finally are getting to see these two go at it on March 31st. Listen, I put my hand on, on his back, I was like, damn! <laughs> it was like stone! I was like, man, listen, I've got to stay friends with this dude. Anthony Joshua took up boxing at a much later age due to various different factors, but mostly because he didn't realize the talent he had while he was exceeding in other sports, such as athletics and football. I do regret packing in my younger days, you know, yeah, I was a bit of a baller. Joshua had some trouble with the law as a young adult, which resulted in him taking up boxing to channel his energy in a positive way. His natural talent was nothing short of mind-blowing. Within just a few short years, he was competing and beating some of the best amateurs, not just in Britain, but the world, as he became the British ABA and Olympic champion within just a three-year period of competing. I would advise anyone who hasn't gone and watched his amateur fights to seek them out because he really was something special for such an office. Joshua turned pro in 2013 and pretty much instantly became a superstar in Britain as he traveled the country knocking over every area level fighter with staggering ease. Joshua just 
Joshua put himself on the world stage after destroying Dillian White in a British title fight classic in 2015, and then went on to breeze through American prospect slash champion Charles Martin for his first world title, which was also courtesy of the big man Tyson Fury. Joshua then had a fight of the year showdown with Vladimir Klitschko in April of 2017, where both rightfully earned a standing ovation exit after a brutal 11 round war that saw both men hit the deck. I don't think Joshua has had to come through as many tough fights as Parker throughout his career so far, but it could be down to Joshua simply making easier work of his opposition. They only have one fighter on their resumes in common in Carlos Takam, who gave them both a fair share of trouble, and I often wonder why promoters match their fighters with Takam, as he always just seems to do his best to make your fighter look bad without much praise for a victory. Starting off with some positives for Joseph Parker. The main thing to note is the speed and combination punching, which is undoubtedly amongst the best in the division. Some go as far to say he is the quickest, but it really depends on who he's fighting, which is the same for Joshua. Because Joseph Parker seems to be a guy that steams forward and tries to use his power and his speed to get people out of there, so... Parker has no issue going from head to body in a split second, sometimes with the same hand, which is rare in today's game. It certainly isn't a textbook style of attack as he throws some wide shots, but overall, it's something his opponents have to react to for the entire 12 rounds against him. Parker, although often criticized for his defense, is a very sharp and concentrated fighter while boxing on the back foot or in center ring. Blocking and parrying shots consistently, he rarely gets caught off guard while in these positions. Uh, Parker may have already put a little bruise under Andy Ruiz's left eye, so... Joshua, like Parker, also has fast hands, especially considering his size and mass, but again, rarely gets to flex these attributes against an active opponent. He was throwing fours and fives against Dillian White after he slowed down in their fight. And if you go back a bit further, Joshua was putting combos together like Muhammad Ali against the likes of Darch and Baktov. Now, just for the record, they aren't exactly on Brian London's level, but you get the point. The real standout point for Joshua is his ability to counterpunch at pretty much any range. On the inside, he can punish you with a parry or a block counter. On the outside, with a shift to the feet and a big straight right. It's this that makes him so dangerous at every second of the round. His natural instinct is to respond with fire instantaneously. Not like Vladimir Klitschko, for example, who would rather grab and wear you down over time. It's not just the instinct to fire back, but the speed he does it at. It's something you simply can't teach the master at this level. He has the ability to take a punch and counter without flinching. Any boxers or trainers watching this will know, flinching after being hit can mean the entire difference to whether you can actually take up boxing, full stop, regardless of talent. I've always pictured this fight to take place in the center ring for the large majority, and I think it's here that we'll see the best from both men. But if Parker decides to press, then we might get an early knockout for either man depending on Parker's intent. One thing that does make me cringe a little bit is Parker's over-eagerness while coming forward. It's wild, wide, defensively wrong for so many reasons, and just seems to be perfect for a supreme counterpuncher like Joshua. But, and this is a big but, if he comes forward with the same aggressiveness and actually throws genuine knockout shots consistently, this might be the only way for him to put down Joshua. I know Klitschko managed it with a straight right, but Parker simply doesn't have this type of power and range. Joshua, while defensively sound for the majority of the time on the back foot, does look a little stiff and shook up while being bombarded. If Parker can get inside and draw AJ's hands down with a quick 1-2 from body to head and then follow up with an onslaught of hard accurate shots, he has a chance of putting him down. I say this because Parker does actually have the ability to do this with his speed and moderate power. I think both men suffer when it comes to stamina. Sure, AJ's has been more noticeable so far, but Parker's punch output as the rounds progress just seems to keep diminishing. For me personally, it's this fact alone as to why I'll be picking Anthony Joshua to win. If you can't outwork the man, he'll simply make you fight to his pace where he lands the better work round after round because quite simply, he's the better boxer. I have no doubt Parker will put up a valiant effort and my only wish is for both men to come out of the ring just as they went in, young, talented, with a big future ahead of them. 
Thanks for watching, fight fans. If you enjoy this series, make sure you like the video as it helps out a whole lot. Until next time, this is Boxing Legends TV, signing off.